Math 31, welcome to example two. Before we get into it, let's read about arithmetic series. And just so we're, we're clear, right? Arithmetic, you know there's gonna be a D involved. For series, instead of lists, we're adding terms of a sequence. All right, so the arithmetic series and the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic series. So the first six terms, seven terms, two terms, 25 terms, it doesn't matter, but it's a finite number of terms. It's not infinite. All right, so the sum of the terms of an arithmetic sequence is an arithmetic series, right? So that's all a series is, is add the terms of a sequence. If an arithmetic sequence has a first term a sub one and a common difference d, then the sum s sub n of the first n terms is given by these formulas. And you can use either of these two formulas. Sometimes it's better to use this version, sometimes it's better to use this version. But let's take a look at how many variables we have. So with this s sub n formula, you can see you have a sub one as a variable, you have a sub n as a variable, you have s sub n as a variable, and you have n as a variable. So you have four variables here. Right? You have s sub n, which would be a number. n is the term, right? the nth partial sum that you want. You've got a sub 1 and a sub n. All right, over here, let's count the variables we have. Right? We have s sub n, we have n, we have a sub 1, we already counted n, and we have d. So in either of these formulas, you have four variables. And typically what will happen is that you'll be given three of these four variables and asked to, be sol or asked to solve for the fourth one. I'll be given three of these four var variables and I'll be asked to solve for the fourth one. Now where this gets to be a lot of fun, if it already isn't, is this a sub n. If you remember, this a sub n had its own formula from a previous section, right? We said a sub n was a sub one plus n minus one times d, right? So sometimes you have to use that formula and sub it into this formula, right? It's, it's a lot of substitution, a lot of managing things. But I really want to specify the difference between a sub n versus s sub n. a sub n is just a term in your sequence. It's the nth term. So right here, right, if, if I was talking about this, this is just a sub 4. a sub 4 is 36. s sub n is the sum of the first n terms in your sequence. All right, so if I was talking about s sub 4 over here, that would be 48 plus 44 plus 40 plus 36. So again, I want you to take note of the difference. a sub 4 is just the number. s sub 4 is adding the terms of the sequence, right? a sub 4, fourth term in the sequence. s sub 4, adding the first four terms of the sequence. All right, a sub 4 gets regulated by that formula. s sub 4 gets regulated by each of the, either of these two. All right, so with that, since we haven't even read through this one, I'm going to erase all this. Let's see what we're being asked to do. And let's see if we can figure this out. So it says, consider the arithmetic sequence, 48, 44, 40, 36. So again, I hear arithmetic and I think D. I hear sequence and I think list. And sure enough, I do have a list of numbers here, great. But they, then it gets changed up, right? It says evaluate S sub 21. So that is a series, right? This is telling us to add, right? It's a series, so add terms of the sequence. So before we get going on this, I wanna to explain to you the really long way of doing this problem. If you look at what we have so far, we have a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four. All right, if they're asking you to find s sub 21, what they really want you to do, again, this would be the long way, is to write out the first 21 terms of the sequence, and you only have the first four right here, you'd have to find another um, 17 terms. So you could list out the first 21 terms of the sequence and then add them all together. And that would take you a little while. That's why it's better to start to work these formulas. So we could use either of these two, but let's see what we have and what seems more reasonable. Like, should we use this first one? Should we use the second one? Well, I want S of 21, so if I want s of 21, I know n is equal to 21. Well, that's a wash because n is in both of these formulas. Okay, let's see what else we have. I, I also notice that a sub 1 is in both of these formulas. So a sub 1 I can spot, 
that's 48. I'm just gonna keep in mind that N is 21 just because that's what they asked me to find. Okay, so let's see what we're missing, right? Uh, if I wanted to use this formula, I would need A sub 21, right? That's what I would need here because if N is 21, this is A sub 21. I don't have A sub 21, right? All I have so far is A sub one, A sub two, A sub three, and A sub four. So I can't go directly to that formula. I'll show you how you can eventually get there, but, but let's look at this one. I want S sub 21, I know N, I know A sub 1, I know N, 21, do I know D? If I knew D, then I could plug directly into this formula. Well, I do know D. You can see that if it's arithmetic, there's a, dis a common difference involved. To go from 48 to 44 to 40, I can see that D has to equal negative 4. So since these are the three pieces of information that I have, I should use the second formula. Right, and I'm just going to put a little space here because I'll show you how you can do it eventually if you use the first formula. But let's focus in on the second formula. So if I look at this, I would have S of N equaling N over 2, 2 A sub 1 plus N minus 1 times D. All right. Now, like I said, you were given three of these four variables and you're asked to solve for the fourth one. You know N. I'm about to write 21 there. You know A sub 1. I'll put 48. Again, you know n, 21, and you know d, negative 4. So let's see what we're getting here. If I did this, this would be 21 over 2, 2 times 48, plus 21 minus 1, times negative 4. And then it's a matter of correctly applying PEMDAS and seeing what this number simplifies to. So I'm going to do my innermost grouping symbols and see what I have here. So inside these brackets, it looks like it's 2 times 48 plus 21 minus 1 times negative 4. Okay, I'm going to multiply that by 21 halves and I am looking at about 168. So ultimately, S sub 21 is equal to 168. Now that was using the second formula, which is great. I mean, you only need to solve for this once, but let's talk about how I could use this first formula. If I was going to do this, I need S sub 21 being equal to 21 over two. We know A sub one is 48, but I don't know A sub 21. So I'm gonna scooch this up just a bit so I can keep the formula in view. All right, so let's try and work the second formula. If I was going to replace 21 onto the second formula, we would have 21 over 2, a sub 1 plus a sub 21, okay? And then we're pretty solid because we know a sub 1, but where I get stuck is I don't know a sub 21, right? If I knew that number, I could figure this out. But you do know how to get a sub 21. If you use the arithmetic sequence formula, which we picked up, in section 9.2, you know that a sub 21 will be equal to a sub 1, which was 48, plus 21 minus 1 times negative 4. So let's see what this is going to be equal to. All right, so we have 48 plus 21 minus 1 times negative 4. It looks like that's negative 32. So if I was going to continue to write this sequence out, the 21st term, would be negative 32. All right, so now I'm going to take that a sub 21 value and plug it in right here. Oops. And let's see what we're getting. It looks like inside my parentheses I have 48 minus 32. So I'm going to move that over. 48 minus 32. Okay. And then I need to multiply that by 21 halves. And what number am I getting? 168, which I should. I mean, that's what's awesome about math. It works, right? You get the same answer, or you should get the same answer either way. All right. So here's a different option. If you wanted to use the first formula, if you were like, dude, I'm really into this formula, that's fine. Just remember, you're going to have to combine it. At least in this example, you'll have to combine it with the arithmetic sequence formula that we picked up in section 9.2. All right, so 
Here's how you can do it using the first formula. But again, you'd have to use it in conjunction. All right, this is the arithmetic sequence formula. And that was from section 9.2. All right, so I, I would argue it's just easier, at least in this case, get, with what we were given, to plug it into the second formula. But you, you do have this other option. All right, so with that, we're gonna keep on working these formulas just so we can practice them out a little bit better. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.